fire. I just picked up this milling cutter off the uh, miller and was going to do a small milling job. And I found this is uh, it's quite blunt, needs sharpening. And normally when I get blunt milling cutters, I just put them on one side in a box. And when I've got so many, I'll, I'll resharpen them. Uh, I'm not desperate because I've got plenty of other uh, cutters, but I thought it might be an interesting project to, to show you how I uh, sharpen my slot drills and end mills. Now this uh, this particular end mill is a modified one, it's got a small diameter shank, uh, it's half inch to fit the collet on my uh, on my um, Tom Senior Miller. But um, the way I sharpen these is on my own made uh, tool on cutter grinder. Uh, I mentioned this in previous videos of mine, this is one what I put together quite a lot of years ago, probably over 30 years ago now. But uh, when you see uh, videos about sharpening end mills and slot drills on YouTube, they're nearly always sharpening the front uh, teeth. You can see, but they get damaged on the front. It's all right sharpening the end teeth, but if the damage or wear is on the float, it won't make any difference how it cuts. It'll, it won't make any, it'll just, it'll probably just rub just the same because that's where the main cutting is done is on the floats. It's okay grinding the uh, end uh, teeth if you're just uh, going down with anything but really you've got to grind quite a lot away if you've got damage on the front of the um, floats. If you've got say a 30 second or a, even a 16th damage You've got to grind all that away, and, my, and when you when you do grind it all away, you end up with shallow teeth, and um, it, then you've got to deepen it, and then uh, give clearance, and then recut the uh, the end end teeth. Now the way I do my uh, my end mills and slot drill, the end mills especially is done between centres on the the old made tool and cutter grinder. But I also grind my slot drills uh, on a sliding bush. It's an attachment I made, uh, and this is it. It's a sliding bush. You can actually buy the, buy something similar, uh, but the, the the best type to get is with air bearings, and it, it'll slide in and out. It's a, it's a special technique for grinding slot drills, and it's it can be a bit tricky if you're not used to it. But uh, more of that later, I'll, I'll show you how, uh, how it can be done and uh, you could probably make one of these yourself. Um, there's no mystery about them. This particular one's what I made um, for grinding envelope cutters as well. Envelope gear cutters because it's got a small uh, dividing attachment built into it. But same with slop drills, uh, people just grind the end teeth. Now that's okay if you're going down. But there again, if there's damage on the float, it's not going to really improve it because that's where the wear is and that's where it needs sharpening on the uh, on the floats. I also um, recondition my reamers if these get blunt. Now the main cutting point on a, of a reamer is on the uh, on the chamfer, as you may well know. Now the chamfer is the most important part. Right, you can see it won't focus well with this camera, but but um, well, that's what that's the most important part is the is the chamfer. And they're very easy to to, uh, to sharpen, but you do need a tool on cutter grinder. Although you can get away with it by hand, and I've done that in the past when I've been uh, stuck uh, and and nothing's uh, been working. Um, you can touch them up by hand and get away with it but it's it's risky and what I do also is I check my reamers and make sure that there's no nicks in the floats because if you've got nicks on the float on the, on the edge it can leave uh, score lines and what I do if I find like this one's got some small nicks as long as there's plenty of land on the OD I regrind the floats I regrind in the float itself and that's um, that's something that's not commonly done, but we did that uh, when I was employed in the engineering industry. 
but um, you can uh, you can grind the flutes. Basically, it's polishing polishing the flute. Uh, you don't have to do each one as as hard as the one where the damage is. It's just a matter of taking the nick out till you feel it uh, nice and smooth. You can stone them. You can stone uh, the flutes on the uh, on the front face, but uh, it's never any good in that, in my opinion. But I, uh, I've ground quite a few um, reamers like this and they've come out okay. So that's another thing I, uh, I plan to show. If you want to know more about uh, tool and cutter grind, there's an excellent book out by uh, Norton. Now whether you can still get the uh, book, I don't know. I bought this in 1970, but it's one of the most useful books on uh, tool and cutter grinding. And at the end of this video, I've included some uh, some still pictures from the book. It's it's well worth obtaining because it's a wealth of information. Well, there's uh, my uh, little uh, tool on cutter grind. And there you can see the tooth rest how it's set up uh, close to the wheel. There's the uh, cross feed, and then the other uh, lever is for the uh, table motion for. Guiding the uh, cutters over the uh, tooth rest. It's simple, uh, nothing complicated about them. I'm using a straight wheel at the moment instead of the uh, cup wheel, which um, some people say that the cup wheel should be used to create a, a better um, relief on the cutter, but I, I've always used a straight wheel, never had any problems, and I find it a lot easier. If I get a chance, I will uh, do a setup uh, using a cup wheel to show you the different uh, way of grinding cutters. And here is a, a diagram from the, the Norton uh, Handbook on Tool and Cutter Grinding, and it shows the different methods of uh, grinding using a straight wheel and a cup wheel, and you can see the differences. And I'm using the uh, straight wheel method. Now you can use the edge of a small uh, cup wheel if need be, instead of using a large uh, straight wheel. Incidentally, this uh, straight wheel I'm using has, uh, has been beveled on both sides to give uh, a narrower uh, uh, grinding edge. Now this tooth guide is positioned exactly on the centre line of the wheel and centre line of the uh, centres where the uh, cutter is going to be ground. It's essential everything's lined up if uh, you're going to do the uh, grinding according to the book. It, often I use the uh, theoretical uh, settings in the book. I just I just grind uh, grind my cutters by eye, and they've always been okay. But this uh, this guide has got to be hard. It's got to be hardened uh, at the tip without any tempering. It needs to be really glass hard. And um, I've used these for all my cutter grinding. I've never had one break on me. Uh, it has a tiny little radius on the uh, top of the point there to help guide the flute um, over the guide. Well, with everything lined up horizontally, now to get the uh, correct 7 degree clearance, you need to multiply uh, 7 degrees by the diameter of the wheel, which is 5 inches. And this gives you 35. Then you multiply 35 by 0 0.0087 and that gives you 304 thou. So that means that, that to get the correct 7 degree angle, the wheel head must be raised uh, 304 thou. Now I don't have a graduated collar on this slide so I'm using my dial indicator. Now with the wheel at the correct height, I just gently uh, guide the end mill over the tip of the uh, guide. And this is the reason why you need the tip to be uh, completely hard. If it was made of a soft uh, material, it would just dig in. Whereas with it being pot hard, it glides over. And it's just slightly set back, it's not on the exact edge. Uh, of the um, the spiral, it's just slightly set back. If it was set far too forward, it would be catching the wheel anyway. It's just so that the uh, 
the freshly ground cutting edge isn't actually riding on the uh, edge of the guide. There is uh, one important thing you must remember as well when uh, when grinding cutters, and that is to have your stops properly set so that you don't overrun uh, the rear end of the cutter or the front. Um, it don't matter really with this type of cutter because there's pl plenty of clearance on both ends. But with cutters uh, with a larger shank, there's always a danger of running into it, so you've, you've got to be careful. And here you can see how the uh, tooth rest works with the cutter riding over the tip. I've uh, taken my dust extractor off so it doesn't obstruct the view. And of course it's important to, to make sure that the, uh, the tooth rest is actually uh, angled at either side with a tiny little radius um, at the tip just to make sure make it easier for a cutter to ride ride up the slight angle and over the top and keep it at correct height. Well that's the primary 7 degree angle that finished. I just uh, need now to raise the wheel head up to a total of 0 0.5 to give the secondary the 12 degree clearance. Sorry for the blurry blurriness, the camera doesn't seem to want to focus. And it's also strange, it's giving like a strobe effect to the grinding wheel, which looks like it's going round fairly slow. But I can assure you, this, uh, this wheel's really zipping round. Now that's the, uh, the secondary clearance completed. I'm just now uh, putting the dial indicator on just to check for uh, for clearance. And the amount of fall offshoring indicates that uh, there is plenty of uh, clearance. Now this cutter has been ground that many times, the secondary clearance is, is, is rather thick and uh, technically it really could do with a tertiary clearance or a third backing off. Uh, it should be okay. Uh, in the past I've, I've always... Uh, not bothered really, and it's they've, they've cut uh, without any problem. Well, that should do for this cutter. The next job is to set up and uh, grind the end teeth. Here's a view of some of my other uh, tooth rests. These are 3 8 diameter ones as opposed to the 516s which uh, I'm currently using. Of different shapes, uh, different thicknesses, um, and slightly different points for different uh, kinds of cutter. They're all hardened out uh, on the tip. This is the flexible blade made from old uh, hacksaw blades. Well, I hope it was of interest to you, and thanks for watching, and Happy New Year for 2023.